Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to go over a couple little things that I sort of came up with some of the strike tutorials as well as kind of how to solve the classic problem of um, I'm ordering my group to attack something but they're all concentrating on one target when I really wanted them to split their fire and I don't want to sit there and fiddle with everything. So let's go ahead and show you what your problem probably was. So I'm going to press Control F11 here and I'm just going to create a simple mission here. Strike this because uh, this is what I call it. We'll make this one a land strike. Press okie doke. And what we're going to do is we're going to select some targets. Uh, these two targets look nominal. I'm going to go over here, add them to the map. It's going to say uh, some weapons might need a detected mission to engage. That's a non-issue. They're just giving you a heads up to say that that radar, if you were hitting with it, basically an arm, you'd have to make sure we detected it first. So what I'm going to do is I'll do everything smart here. I'll set my flight size to two. I'll come down here and uh, add my two F-16s because of course F-16. Uh, why would you not use an F-16 for this mission? And you know just to check things out real fast. I'm just going to go over down here and press create or update flight plans and let's go take a look here so I click on flight bacon 28 that's a fabulous name for that and I can see that they take off uh, they migrate over to the target they drop some bombs or endpoints right here obviously we could tweak this thing left or right or anything perfect I'm not complaining about that at all it's everything that I wanted it to be except so if we were going to go to mission settings here and like well I, I there's two f-16s they've got plenty of bombs there's no reason for me to concentrate everything on the p-19 here i really want them to go after this observing building here too so you come over here you come down to a formation single aim you're like ah, i'm just gonna get smart here i'll go ahead and do a trail attack and then i'll update my flight plans oh look at that oh, that looks gorgeous you can see very very clearly that they're going to split their fire and they're all targeting the same target I really want this guy down here to be over here and dropping the bomb on him while this guy gets dropped over here. Oh, no, 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 okay, okay. So you say, well, I'm, I'm going to let the mission editor fix it. I'll go down to my targets. I'll make sure they return to base. I'll make sure they actually continue mission here. So uh, when they do do their opportunities, uh, they're going to do it and they're going to run back. Obviously, we want to engage into Winchester because if we got bombs left over, we want to use them, right? We don't want to just rush home. By the way, if you do engage into a shotgun, they basically drop one strike and go home. Winchester means keep it at it. So you're like, you've got everything set up the way that you want it. You go ahead and pause the game. You're sitting there looking excited. Uh, you have 16s take off. You can see they changed targets. You can see they also updated those lovely flight plans. They drop their bombs and they run home. Now you just saw a blur of motion, but the good news is we can see everything that happened here. And we can see very clearly that every single bomb, which already obliterated the P-19, obliterated the P-19 on the first hit, meaning our lovely small building of observer was never even attacked. Bummer. So you say, well, that sucked. Let me reload the scenario. I did exactly what you told me last week. I made sure I always save games after editing missions. Oh my gosh, folks. So like, this is the correct option here. This should be default, in my opinion. But anyway, so you come back to this and say, well, I guess I could do a manual attack, but that'd be pretty tedious. Could you just show us what to do here? Oh, well, we could use a mission. That's one way to do it. And that's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go do the same thing again. I'll do a strike it twice. I'm going to go ahead down here, make it a land strike, and I'm just going to get a little sneaky this time. So I can see my two targets are ready. I'm going to engage into Winchester. I don't want to like waste my passes, so to speak, here. Oh, that looks good to me. That looks good to me. I'm going to set my flight size to one. Uh-oh, what did you do that for? Well, I did that because that will cause different flights to target different groups in the game of Command Modern Operations. All targets are attacked by flight. They're not attacked by unit unless you're using standoff weapons which means if I'm using unguided bombs like my F-16 buddies down there, they're all going to gank up on one target, do their thing, and then rush back home, which means if I have more than one flight, I get to strike more than one target. See how that works? Watch this. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add my two F-16s. Uh, create update flight plans. Delightful. We can see here we have one unit here. Oh, this is a Reno 42, and we can see the second unit, Reno, I should say, Slugger 79. And what you'll observe here is both of these units are now striking separate targets because they're now considered separate flights. Now, one of the problems you're probably going to sit here and go is say, whoa, 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 slow down there, buddy. That, that's sketchy. If you do something like that, that means they're going to be kind of staggered and kind of going all over the sky at the same time. You've got to do something to make that better. I totally agree with you. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my time on target so that I know everybody gets there at the same time. So right now it's uh, 1230. Uh, we could probably do 10 without much of an issue here. So do 10 to the 10. Looks good to me. I'll go ahead and click away. Whenever you edit the time, you might want to go back and update flight plans because now their flight plan time is going to change as well. Just kind of be mindful of that. 
Now, while we're showing you all this uh, goofiness here, which I call goofiness because eh, it feels unintuitive, but I get it, I get it, especially with unguided weapons. Obviously, if we're using missiles, this is a different scenario. But uh, one of the things I like to share here is let me pull this out of the way so you all can see. So in case, I know you can't see off screen, but basically I'm selecting between the two. Do you notice that there's this little holding pattern right here that basically they're getting ready to make sure they get to the right top? One of these really fun tricks that I like to do is if you click on waypoint two here and hit F2, one of the things you'll notice here is we're loitering at 3,000 feet. Now, anybody who knows anything about airplanes knows if you load her at 3,000 feet, you're basically wasting gas. So what you can do is you can actually come in here and tell them to loiter at high altitude. So if I grab this other guy here, let me grab him real quick, uh, Pride 50. Come down here, I'm going to order him to loiter at a high altitude here, 36,000 feet. Again, these are things I feel like there should be options for, but I, I don't know. I've got a couple hours in this game. There's always little things with anything in the universe. Anyway, so what that means is they're actually going to loiter to make sure they're hit there at the right time at high altitude and actually save some gas, which is kind of helpful if you ask me. So everything else is set. That's all I need to do. So go ahead and unpause again. I'll speed up time. Gently, gently, gently. <laughs> I'm trying not to go too fast here. I do want you to see the action, but I also don't want to have you sit around for 45 minutes waiting for these darn things to take off. You know what we should do? We should see what time they're actually launching. See, that would be SMRT. Let's see here. I'll strike it twice. So what is your takeoff time today? Your takeoff time is a time on target. Local time is 5 a.m. Takeoff time is 4.37 a.m. Is that nice? So it's about a minute from now. Watch this. Watch this. It says 4.36. 4.37. They're just oh, oh, right on time. Delightful. Now, this is so cool because if I click on one of my F-16 buddies here, you'll see that he's climbing up to 36,000 feet before he hits his holding pattern. Now, strategically, sometimes you can't pull things like this off, obviously, because the enemy could see you at altitudes like this. But the fact of the matter is they're not wasting gas uh, chilling at 3,000 feet, and they are still loitering right now, so they're just sipping, which is exactly what we want them to do. So they're basically getting ready to make sure they strike the target at exactly the correct time. Got to do this carefully. Got to do There they go on, and they're off. Now, the interesting thing here, now I think you'll get a kick out of this, is that they're going to be cruising around 36,000 feet here, which is awfully high, and they just uh, started descending to get ready. But you'll notice they're still targeting separately, even though this is the same mission doing this operation. Because they're split, they're going to be dropping their bombs, number one, simultaneously, number two, on separate targets, and number three, they're all together for collective defense. On the mark, get set, bombs away, everyone. Oh, no. Let's see here. Why did you not drop your bombs? 99% chance I was at the wrong altitude. So one of the things you cannot see easily here is the fact that we're actually up really high. This is 1756 feet. Uh, when he went to drop his bombs, he was at 400 feet. So he was actually below his drop his bombs altitude. But uh, we can't have that on a mission, of course. Let me go ahead and grab him. Pause. Grab him. Pause. Let's put them back. So one of the things you always have to watch out for is stuff like that. My bad for putting them too high in the mountains. You did say before you launched the mission, right? If you learn anything from me, do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go double check this. Let's see here. We are at 1,062. So one of the quickest ways to fix this problem, see how he's just too darn low, is you can actually put them to terrain following. You can put them at like 2,000 feet. That will lock them in such a way that they are going to always be at the correct altitude for that particular component. So I'm just going to come over here, manual override, terrain following, 1,000, I could do 2,000 feet, kind of a thing like that. So if I shift F1, click on this guy again, let's go ahead and I'll drop them all. Click on this guy again. Yes, I know technically this is how to not have to do all these things. Allocate L, but I can't leave a mission where we're just going to like sit there and sail by. We got to do our thing. So he's going to pop up a little higher and there's his bombs and there's his bombs, just like I promised. And of course, I will go ahead and I'll let those drop down like that. Ba -ba 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 -bam. Nice. So the cool thing here, obviously, other than my little boo-boo with the altitudes there was the fact that uh, they struck separate targets at this exact same time, which is exactly what we want. Now, because that's embarrassing, and not because I can, let's go ahead and show you how to fix that for next time so that doesn't happen to you too. So let's go ahead and create that same mission again really quickly. All right, et voila. I've got this one over here. I've got, zoom out a little bit. I've got this one over here. You can see the two missions are looking pretty darn groovy right there, targeting the two. So one of the things we'll do is we'll make a quick little adjustment to our logic here to prevent that from happening. Now, there's a couple little things we could do here to fix that. One thing I would do normally is I come to the endpoint here, going to initial point, not endpoint. That's something I always say. It's enough. A Falcon thing. But one of the things we can do here is there's a manual override for altitude. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do terrain following 2,000 feet. Go to the target, terrain following 2,000 feet. Uh, that'll prevent that from happening. I'll swing over to this guy real quick. F2, we're going to go all the way over to our initial point. Uh, we're going to do terrain following 2,000 feet. We're going to cruise over to waypoint 6, uh, terrain following 2,000 feet. So basically, we're manually overriding our strike altitude. So uh, let's see if that one works a little better this time. 
Go ahead and close that. I think the uh, takeoff time is what, 437? There they go. I don't know. I always get Mission Impossible in my head whenever I think about these things. So there they go. Oh, 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 slow down, slow down. No need to rush, folks. No need to rush. Oh, 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 look at how coordinated it looks. All right. So theoretically, if everything works correctly, you want to see some really pretty terrain, by the way. Oh, this is the Glen Falls region. A fun thing that I did not know uh, when I went to Glen Falls is they changed the name of the airport when I flew in there one time. And uh, I was very confused as to why the airport diagram said one airport, Floyd, and the other one, of course, said Glen Falls, which was what everybody was calling it basically on the uh, radio there. And it was a little confuzzled. It was the first time I'd ever flown up there in the real world. So you know how that goes. So anyway, uh, we can see here that they're about 400 feet AGL. You can see he's going to come in there. He jumps up to his 2,000 feet AGL, just like I asked him to. Uh, they're going to give themselves an range. And they're going to fly right over the top of the target, which means uh, something caused them to uh, miss their target. Searching to opportunity target, they're going to come back around again. All right, third time is the charm. So the only thing I changed this time is I made sure that my waypoint was set to 5,000 feet absolute. I actually went over here and checked the altitude of this target. It's at 1762. 5,000 minus 762 should, uh, 1,762, I should say, should give us plenty of margin as far as dropping the bombs. So this is the only thing I changed. So we overfly the target, and there's the bombs. Ah, bam. And that was delightful, perfect in every way, and uh, everybody did a nice job. So as you can see, there's a lot of little traps uh, that you have to really, 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 really watch out for. Uh, military planners, of course, uh, they don't just sit here and uh, basically just say, YOLO, just go, kind of a thing in two minutes. There's quite a bit of target study involved, uh, determining the best optimal angles and everything along those lines and making sure th uh, the target makes sense. You know, all those things go into it. But the important thing that we saw there, especially after I fixed it twice, was the fact that when you are dealing with targets like that, you can do that. And if you need to split your forces, you split your forces. Enjoy.